jaws dropped across the MMA scene in South Africa this past week when it was announced that Gareth Soldier Boy McLennan was no longer fighting in the UFC. I couldn't believe it. I want to know why exactly what happened. Joining me now is Soldier Boy, Gareth McLennan. Gareth, thanks for coming in. Is it true? Are you no longer fighting in the UFC? Yeah, look, uh, the contract between myself and the UFC is, uh, is no longer, um, which puts me in a situation. Um, I have the ability to choose where I want to go. Um, it opened up a lot of options for me, um, and I'm really just focusing on on those options, and you know, just trying to decide what's 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 best for me. In my mind's eye, a lot of South African MA fans have not been able to watch you for the past year and a half since you've been in the UFC, and the possibility of you possibly coming back and fighting in a cage in, the, in South Africa is a is a fantastic option. Is that something you consider fighting in South Africa again? What are you what are you weighing up? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I, I've been presented with a lot of opportunities um, that are fantastic for me. Um, we're looking in the business sector. There's, there's amazing opportunities that have opened up for myself and, and my wife and our company, Soldier Boy Management. Um, I'm in a prime position to really focus on that, on, on that work now. Um, so I'm giving that a little bit more attention than anything else. Um, and hopefully by the end of the year, that has really come to come to fruit and, and we've done everything we want to do from that side. Um, as regarding MMA, I'm not gone from MMA. Um, it's what I love to do. I've just taken a little step back. I've just taken a little, little time off, uh, spending with my family, my kids. You know, me traveling so much uh, started to affect, affect the young ones. And, and uh, I just want to, I want to give them a little bit of love and, and show them that dad is around and, and they do matter to me. Um, and then spending time with my wife and obviously what we've got going at home. It also opened other opportunities for me to do so many other things. Um, you know, I'm obviously competing in my fourth Oakley crossover uh, this year in July, which is a massive event that's South Africa's biggest sporting stars. Mm. If you look through that list of people that are on that list, it's, a, it's an honor for me to be just in, in the same presence, not alone looked in the same regard. Um, so that's, that's very exciting. We're building that up to, to a huge year. There's a lot of training going on for that because it's extremely competitive. Um, and it's a, it's a fun event. I've looked at uh, riding the Cape Epic. Um, we, ha we, had a, we had a good chat with the, with the Cape Epic team and um, what we can do for them and what they can do for me. And that's an exciting possibility. There's something that's very challenging. Um, it, it just, all of a sudden, these things start appearing in front of me and I, I can start doing things that I want to. From a fighting perspective, organizations, there's many options for us on the table. Um, we're not short of any option. Um, it's just where do I want to go? Do I, do I want to get back on the plane and go overseas and be away from my family and, and invest in fighting overseas and building that international name? You know, if I look at that, 1FC uh, in, in, on the Asian continent, they're massive into combat sports and they just, they, they thrive for it. And, you know, there's one billion people. I don't know how many is five or six billion people in 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 that area 1. alone. One point two billion viewers on win one, yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. That's a massive target. So that are, can catapult your name into another level as well. Um, Bellator, Bellator is you know UFC's biggest competition. Um, I like I like what they're doing. I like the fighters they're having mm. there. And if you look at a, a competition level, Bellator's right next to the UFC. Mm. Um, They've, they've got some serious... Obviously, you're going to be talking with the EFC about the possibility of fighting here again, surely. Look, for me, the biggest thing coming home is that, and like you said earlier on, is that South Africa hasn't been exposed to me for a while. Um, and one of the biggest things that I did miss when I was overseas was, was the fans and the environment and something I'd got so used to and something I, I love to do. I love to perform in front of uh, my home crowd. You go and you fight in other, uh, in other countries against uh, other athletes in their home crowd, you actually realize how powerful that is. Um, EFC has never been off the cards for me coming back home. It's a great organization. They built an amazing platform for South African fighters. Um, how do I want to be involved with them? Is it on a fighting level? Is it uh, a mentorship level for, for younger fighters coming through, building their names, trying to take MMA from from where it is and catapulting it to the next level, you know, getting a guy who go, can go to the UFC and become a, become a, a top 10 fighter in the UFC, um, uh, a, a Bellator, a 1FC, one of those organizations, a champion on an international platform, that's what we're looking to achieve. That's how we catapult South African MMA into the, ne to the next step. Um, so, you know, I'm filled with these options. Um, I, I did say to my, uh, to my wife a while ago that if I, if I was gonna retire from MMA, I would retire in front of my own, my, my own crowd. Um, so, 
Yeah, look, the possibilities are there. Those are discussions that I would then need to have with EFC mm -hmm. or a 1FC or a Bellator. Um, we have put our feelers out. We have spoken to a few places and people have been very receptive to us um, and are very interested in seeing what, w what's happening. For me, I'd said I'd like to look to maybe only next year competing. End of the year, next year, beginning of next year, if, if the right fight comes along. Yeah, we, 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 we released the news that you're, you and UFC had parted ways within five minutes. You know, a whole bunch of middleweights on the AFC were calling you out straight away, within minutes of the news being released. Yannick Pahati, Jukes de Plessis. I mean, surely you know that there's a big money fight in South Africa for you at some point in the future. Oh, no, definitely. I mean, I, I don't disagree at all. Um, EFC holds many, many, many vital keys for me and my future and what I'm developing. You know, my biggest thing about being, being a, a professional sportsman was Yes, I wanted to live the life as a sportsman and I wanted to enjoy that because that's my passion, that's what I do. Um, from a little boy, I wanted to be a professional sportsman. You know, I never knew, knew which angle. Was it rugby? Was it cricket? You know, I tried the rugby route. And then being MMA, um, I've been part of something so amazing. If we look back to when we started uh, EFC and when I got involved in MMA, there wasn't really a scene, it wasn't anything. It was kind of, it was those weekend warriors who were in the mix. You know, and I, I've been... I've been a very big part of watching that grow, along with with five or six other big name fighters in this country, um, two or three big gyms. You know, we built something that we should all be proud of. Um, so EFC is always very close to my heart, um, and uh, EFC has a lot of channels which I could represent them on. Yeah. Um, you know, just only time will tell. I've got to, I've got to got to get myself in a space where I'm happy to compete. And, and we're in that process at the moment. We, we're busy rebuilding uh, Soldier Boy from the ground. Um, and I'm going to develop myself to a stage um, where I know I'm at my best or at the best I've ever been. Um, is that going to take another year? Is that going to take another six months? We don't know. Um, well, I'm glad you're in a great place. But if I don't hear Enter the Sandman, Again, in this country, I awful cheated. Just give us a bit of a, a conclusion. I missed that as well. I won't lie to you. I, 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 I had to. I was, I was denied using Into the Sandman at uh, the UFC, and I, I had to deal with uh, ACDC Thunderstruck. And it's a great song. It still it's gives. Song. Yeah. It, it gives me the same emotion. But there's just something about Into the Sandman and that whole environment that's just so exciting to me. So hey, who knows? South Africans could could see me in the ring very soon. <laughs> It all just depends. Cool. Well, it's great to have lots of choices. I'm glad you're in that position. Just give us a conclusion of what the whole UFC experience was like for you. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to be true to ourselves. Um, the UFC is the biggest organization in the world. It's the 50 of the best fighters in the world. It's the elite. Any, any one of those 50 on their day at the right time could be number one, could be a world champion. Um, it's a big machine that operates at an incredible pace it is so well tuned. Everything is just pinpointed on the money, mm. um, and that's that's it's quite a it's quite a it can be quite overwhelming. You know, you walk out to a, a weigh-in and there's twenty five thousand people at a weigh-in. You know, if you're not used to that experience, it'll it'll chew up and, and spit you out. It's it's do or die in there as well. Those guys come with everything that they have. They're willing to die to win that fight because they realize how much it means to them. When you're entering the UFC and when you're trying to make a name for yourself, that first four or five fights is, are going to be the hardest fights of your life. And how to travel. What is it like to travel? You're not in the same comfort. You're in a hotel for seven days. You can't, certain areas, there's language barriers. You can't get the things that you need. Um, you're constantly in a this scramble to keep yourself in a comfort zone. If you don't know how to do that and you're rocking up at the UFC for the first time and you get into that vir environment, it's a, you're immediately on the back foot. So we need to teach you guys how to handle that. They need to be able to fly, land, be comfortable, be in the right mindset because there's only one thing you're doing you're, and that's your job. You're, mm. going, you, you're going there to win. You have to be 100% focused on that. There can be no distractions. At that level, no distractions. You look at a guy like Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor is not the greatest fighter in the world. He's he's got a he's got a small tool set. Yes, he's 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 adapt. He can adapt in any situation. He's uh, he, he can grapple. He can wrestle to certain levels. He can strike. He's a world class striker. What makes Conor 
who he is in his mind is un invincible there is no person on this planet who's better than him um he honestly believes that whoever you put him in front he will destroy them that's a mindset that you need to have you can't beat a guy like that mm. you, you you're already on the back foot fighting him you already start to ask yourself questions when you face a guy like that who's so confident and so arrogant um and and so powerful in his demeanor and the way he carries himself he owns that stage from the time he arrives to the time he leaves that's what we need to teach guys within this uh, in this country 100 percent back him give him the confidence that he has a whole country behind him um if i look at one of my fights if i look at the fight in ireland and uh, i remember we had just lost the world cup uh, semi-final against new zealand that mm. night mm. And I remember saying to myself, before I walked out there, I said, I'm going to give my country something to be proud of. That was, that was one of my biggest driving forces in, the, in that fight. And to feel that power behind you entering there, even though I was halfway across the world, it, I, I felt invincible going into that cage. And, and we need that on every fight. You, know? yeah. you need that every time you step in there. Was that the high point for you? Was that the, the Bubba Bush fight, was it? Yes, it's, it is. Was that the high point for you? You know, I think the whole experience was great for me, even though the results weren't, didn't come out the way that they, that I wanted them to come out. Um, probably a tough decision in, in Vancouver against uh, Alessio De Chirio, but you can't complain about the things that happened. Yeah. I, I can't, uh, I can't point, point fingers and say, oh, you know, I should have won it. Why didn't I win? I didn't win. That's the end result at the end of the day. Yeah. But I learned so much from it. I, I learned so much about myself and my character and who I am as a person and what I'm capable of. You know, losing losing uh, in Rotterdam was it was it was tough because I was so well prepared. I, I had done everything right at that stage, and it just it was kind of just this anticlimax. Uh, you know, I had to learn about that as well. I think that all the whole experience gave me so much knowledge. Um, I listened, I watched. Um, and I took so much from there that I have to give back to the young guys in this country. Yeah, it's sounding to me is that that soldier boy management going forward is something where you want to take South African fighters and, and give them tuition and instruction on how to fight overseas. Is that something you definitely like? Yeah, look, out? mentoring guys, you know, showing them that I, not to make the same mistakes that I did. Yeah. You know, and then that just levels them, that levels them up one above what, what I was. Mm. And then he goes and he does his job and he wins and he loses and... He might not achieve the same, he, uh, he might go two or three levels up and that's where his journey ends and he brings that information back. And then we build on the next guy to the next level. And then we eventually get our champion and we eventually show the world that we are capable of being there. Because as I sit in this chair, I still believe South Africans are the toughest guys around. We are mentally in a great space to compete there. Um, we're just as hungry as anybody else. And uh, we're not afraid of confrontation. We're not afraid to get in there and get stuck in. We have everything that it takes, but it's a learning process. It's always been a learning process for us because we're way behind the rest of the world. Yeah. We will get there. So, we, oh, no, I had to ask you then. So being a, a leader of, of South African mixed martial artists and, and being a, a person, a mentor to other fighters, and also a, a guy who's still got his mind on competing in the future, where are you going to base yourself? Have you thought about where you're going to be training and where you're going to be mentoring these guys? So look, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at competing in some other martial arts as well um, in South Africa. Mm. Um, going back to karate, uh, I want to compete in, on, the, on the South African karate circuit and look to maybe compete internationally. It's a passion. I, I did karate since the age of nine and going back, it brought back so many memories and I've just really fallen in love with it again. So I'm back in there again and I'm training with that and th that's something that I'm looking into competing in. And if I, like, if I can give my, my experience and my knowledge and, my, and put my weight behind that and we can develop that as well, fantastic. Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu is a, is a massive uh, thing for me. Um, it's a place, it's a sport that I love so much and I really want to grow in, in this country because we have really good jiu-jitsu guys in this country and they can be world champions. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to give that there as well. Uh, I'm probably looking maybe going to California in October to compete at the Worlds. Um, we're still kind of weighing up that, that option. So I've got access to a lot of places. I, I, yeah. I'm training in a lot of different environments. Um, I don't have one set gym where I'm tied down to at the moment. Uh, who knows, maybe I'll see a, 
Soldier Boy's uh, gym pop up somewhere <laughs> in the near future, which is where it'll be my home base. Um, like I said, there's there's an array of options in front of me, and uh, I'm just trying to make the smartest decision for myself and my future and my family. Cool. Today, thanks for coming in, and all the options are available. I really can't wait to see you fight again soon, my friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for watching. Do join us next week for more features, insight, and interviews. And don't forget, you can join us on social media. If you've got any questions or anything you want to see or you want to show us, please do get in touch. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Be good.